Hey, y'all. Hey. Hey, Coach Kelly. How are you? Great. Right, let me see who we have here. We have Linda, who's going to be our special guest today. We mm -hmm. have Robin, Tiffany, um, Sunilia, Chante, Murda, um, Donna, Deborah, Gina, Mari, and Bernadette so far. Okay, let me turn on the chat. And for housekeeping from the Mute Your Mic Ministry, I'll ask everybody to, um, to go ahead and mute their mic. For the past couple of weeks, I've had to interrupt the speaker and have them um, have everybody mute their mic. So I, I don't want to have to do that once they get in their flow. I really like them to be able to, you know, take off in their flow zone, okay? So welcome to the Wisdom Wednesday show. Guess what, y'all? Today is our last Wisdom Wednesday. Our last Wisdom Wednesday that we're going to be doing, and I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Linda Bug is going to be talking to us about navigating down Clarity Lane through fear and self-doubt. And we all know that at some point in our life, we have had this. If you haven't had it, you're probably not on this broadcast because we don't have any spring chickens on here, as we always say. So every one of us has been through this. Um, you're either like, as, as my grandmother used to say, you're either, you're either in it now, you just came out of it, or you're about to go through it. And that is, that is self-doubt and those, those voices that play in our head. And I'm sure that Linda is going to talk to us a little bit about this today. All right. So I will go ahead and turn it over to Linda. Thank you, Coach Kelly. Thank you, everyone, for joining this segment of the Wisdom Wednesday show. I'm so happy to have you here. And I want to take you on a journey, an imaginary journey with me about navigating down Clarity Lane through um, self-doubt and fear. So if you want to close your eyes and kind of visualize what I'm about to explain, you're welcome to do that. But I want you to imagine Clarity Lane being a street in a nice suburban neighborhood. It has colonial homes on each side. It's kind of an older neighborhood, one that's been around for a long time. The homes are made of brick or they're made with stone. The trees are very mature, they're tall. And during the summertime, um, as you walk down Clarity Lane. And the main thing about Clarity Lane is quiet. It's a quiet neighborhood, one of those neighborhoods where you can sit on the front porch and just wave across the street and say, hey, hey, neighbor. That's Clarity Lane. Now, Clarity Lane is where you bring all of your goals and aspirations, right? At the beginning of Clarity, it's maybe that new project that you're working on, that you want to embark on at work, that you have no idea, is totally outside of your comfort zone, but you want to, you figure that you want to challenge yourself to do it. Or it could be um, something, a difficult conversation you need to have with someone to make your relationship better. Or it could be um, a career change that you want to embark on or it could be retirement that you're facing at some point because, you know, what am I gonna do with myself after re I retire? You know, it could be all those things that we could be juggling because we have so much on our plate and we put it to the side because we don't wanna have to deal with it. Or we have so many things on our plate we choose not to do with it and we can't make up our mind which one to do first. Those are the things that we bring to Clarity Lane. Now, who lives in Clarity Lane, you may ask yourself. Well, the first one on the right side, as soon as you turn on Clarity Lane, is Clarity, right? Clarity lives first. That's that first house on the right. She has that front porch, and she's got water with mint, cucumber, with mint and cucumbers or lemons in the water. And she's like, girl, come on up. Let's talk. Let's have a conversation about what you have on your plate or whatever goal that you want to achieve. And then Clarity lives next to so many positive neighbors, right? So on the other side of the Clarity Lane, there's that fear of self-doubt, you know? Fear is like, oh yeah, come on over, have a seat on my porch, because I'm going to tell you all the reasons why you shouldn't do something. And next to fear is self-doubt. And self-doubt is like, girl, come on over 
here, sit with me. I'm going to let you know all the reasons why not. Maybe you shouldn't do it. Don't have that difficult conversation. It's going to go away on its own. You don't need to do that. And then next to self-doubt, you've got procrastination. And Mr. Procrastination doesn't do anything but talk all day, right? It's like, want to talk, talk, talk. Come on over. We can have a good conversation. Talk all day and stay on Facebook. <laughs> That's Mr. Procrastination. And next to procrastination is complacent. And complacent is that person where we'll tell you, oh, you got a good job already. What do you need to move on anywhere else? You got good benefits. You got all these things going on. Well, complacent. We can just sit here and I watch everybody else. Um, wait. We well, can it's, just sit. It's sit just an like, Excel sheet that you just sent me, right? Okay. What's the what's the vendor name? Okay. I think it's Jones. This should be me. It does sound like Jones' voice. Let me um see if I can mute her. Okay, you're good. Okay, thank you. So yeah, complacent, that, that neighbor, you know, just the one to keep you where you are and tell you all the reasons why you could just stay where you are and just sit there and watch everybody else walk down Clarity Lane and, and get to where they want to, their end point. So Clarity Lane, at the end of Clarity Lane is success. On the left are all the obstacles and all the reasons why we tell ourselves not to do something. And on the right side of Clarity Lane are all the reasons why um, the things that give us the motivation, that gives us the de determination to move forward with our goals and get to the end of the road. So yes, clarity lane leads to success. So let's talk a little bit about clarity. I mean, we all know what clarity means, you know, having clarity, we've all had those moments where we just became um, crystal clear on something, something that we needed to do, what we wanted to do, we knew we just needed to do it. And sometimes clarity comes to us at an aha moment, right? An aha moment is like, oh, wow you know, that sudden insight or discovery of why you need to do something or it just becomes crystal clear to you. Now, according to Oprah, an aha moment is that sudden inspiration or insight, recognition or comprehension. According to, to Oprah, that's her definition. But it's that thing that just comes over us. And, you know, sometimes we're at the point where we have that aha moment, we wanna risk it all and just go for it, okay? So that's pretty much about Clarity Lane, but I want to tell you a little bit about my journey down Clarity Lane and how fear and self-doubt came into play with me. Okay, so my journey with Clarity Lane came about, a, it's all about a career change that I had. And it was 2020, New Year, had everybody's like, you know, New Year, new aspirations, excitement, you know, about 2020, you know, it's the end of a decade. Okay, we got, we're going to do some new things. You know, we're going to have some, um, we're all excited, you know, all about the new things that could happen in 2020. And with me, I do vision boards every year and I have a lead word that lead, will lead me through the year. And so last year, my lead word was re refocus because the prior year, it was all about empowering everyone else, empowering my coworkers, empowering everyone around me. So I decided that um, I was gonna make a change for 2020 and just refocus on me. And so that was my lead word for 2020. So I had my vision board, I had my goals and everything that I wanted to accomplish for 2020, and then the pandemic hit. And the pandemic, as you all know, has probably happened to you. It really changed people and their way of thinking. And it did the same for me. So when you have things all planned out, um, you know, with your job and what you're going to do, it really made people take a chance, take a, um, you know, take the opportunity to sit back and reflect and really think about what you wanted to do with your life. At least that's what happened with me. And so I was in a you know corporate job. I was sitting on complacence porch, and I'm walking every watching everybody walk down Clarity Lane, and because um, I felt like oh you know yeah complacent I'm good girl yeah I'm sitting here I'm not happy but I'm good in this corporate gut this corporate job right here, and and so I realized that I needed that I wanted more because the pandemic had gave me the opportunity to kind of sit back and say is this really what you want? Linda, are you really living in your purpose? 
Are you walking in your purpose? I worked as a recruiter. So all day, all day, I'm telling candidates, you know, to live their, to their full potential. You can do this. You can do anything you want to do. And I'm giving this advice, but I'm not taking my own. I'm sitting on complacent porch, sipping on some tea. <laughs> and so I realized, I realized that I needed to find some clarity. Clarity needed to come into play. And so I, you know, I was walking down Clarity Lane. I said, bye, complacent. I'm going over here to visit Clarity and we're going to have a conversation. And Clarity told me, you know what? Here's what you need to do. You need to get out that journal, start to read, to, to, to refocus, start to reflect, start to think about what you really want in life and talk to God. God and I had a lot of conversations, y'all. We talked, we had some good conversations. And he told me like, look, this is what you need to do. I'm like, no, no. Complacent said I had good benefits. Good complacent said I had a good, good job. Why would you want me to leave and do something different? God said, because that's your calling. That's your purpose. And so I prayed on it. I journaled on it. And I had my aha moment. And I took that leap. I took the leap and I left my job. I didn't know exactly how I was going to start a new business or how I was going to get there. I just knew I wanted to continue to help people live to their full potential. And I wanted to help people uh, be the best person that they could be. And so I needed to do that as well. So things just started to evolve after that come into divine order. I was following in my divine footsteps. I was following what God was leading me to. And I came upon a wisdom, wisdom show, a wisdom Wednesday show, just like where you all are right now. And this one was about career change. And I thought, hmm, I'll attend that and see what it's all about. And I attended that Wisdom Wednesday show last year. And, um, and that brought me to Coach Kelly. And it's pretty much history because I've been through probably at least three programs of Coach Kelly, and it has led me to be where I am to now, which is a, a certified life and clarity coach. And I have not looked back. I had no, I had an aha moment for each stage, stage of becoming where I am, and I just have not looked back. I'm at a point where I am now, 2021, my lead words are bold and fearless. So clarity is like, girl, you do your thing. Go ahead and visit next door to confidence and then keep on moving down to determination and then stop on um, focus, um, stop on their porch and, and empowered, stop on empowered porch and you're going to get to success. So like Coach Kelly said, we all have been through situations where we needed to find clarity, where we needed, we're facing a, a difficult situation that we want to, don't want to have to deal with, or we want to do something different. But we can all do that. We can all find clarity. We can all walk down clarity lane. And fear and self-doubt is going to always be there always. It's going to pop in the back of our head. But when we see the end of Clarity Lane, which is success, and know that we're walking in our purpose, we're going to walk down Clarity Lane saying, fear, I ain't fooling with you today. Mm -mm. Self-doubt, girl, bye. I'm going on. I'm going to keep walking towards down success. And I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing to, to make sure that I can be the best person that I can and walk in, within, walk in my purpose. So walking down Clarity Lane is not so bad, even when you have to navigate around fear and self-doubt. You know it's going to always be there because when you're, but when you're focused and focused on your success and your divine purpose, the obstacles on the left side of the street, they're not going to be so, so relevant. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. I love that analogy. It was so good. <laughs> Thank you. you really took us on a journey. Okay, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to recap this as best I can. And then I'm going to open it up for anyone who has any questions. Um, Linda brought to us, she talked about the Imagine Clarity Lane started us off with closing our eyes. 
um, quiet, friendly. We, we all know that neighborhood. You probably got a neighborhood in your head that you visited before, maybe when you were little or as an adult that it's like, oh, I would love to live there. Or maybe you live there, you know, who knows? But it, the, the point was there is a place of clarity that is cool, calm, serene is where she was taking us. But there's also another street or people on that street that's like, hey, I'm self-doubt. Hey, I'm procrastination. Hey, I'm, I'm Mr. Complacent, as she said. Here's the thing, self-doubt, complacency, procrastination, they will always be there for the taking, always. No matter how far we get in life, Obama still deals with it. Oprah still deals with it. It still comes up. They deal with it. It's how do they deal with it is the thing. Do you succumb to that? Do you, do you give in to that? Do you let that voice that's always going like, oh, just sit over here, just sit on the porch, just drink the sweet tea. You got that good job. Don't turn over the apple cart. A lot of those voices play in our head because we got it good. But what is good? What, how do we define good and made it? Linda, you had it made, right? According to something. I did. Said, I had it made. You had right. it made? Right. But I wasn't happy. That's the thing. I was, yeah, I had it made, but I wasn't happy. And I knew it wasn't my divine purpose. I knew I could do what I was doing on my own. And I knew I could do it on my own terms. I knew that I didn't have to um, put in for vacation. I could take vacation when I want, you know? I knew I could do it on my own terms and be fulfilled. And that's why I took that leap. Yes, yes. And even I'm sure during that, because I've taken that leap too from a six figure salary job to you get paid when you, when you, with you get in what you put out. I mean, you get out what you put in. Even in that, there's 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 thoughts, and I'm sure for you, Linda, too, and other people here listening, there's thoughts of, oh, yes, I'm doing this. I can do this. I can do this. And then there's other thoughts on the right side that's like, am I doing the right thing? Will this pan out? Will this work for me? Those thoughts are normal as you're going through that transition, right? But as you, as you get further down that journey and you take one step right after the other down Clarity Lane, intentionally and purposefully, the more you get into that clarity, the, the quieter those voices are of procrastination, of self-doubt, of complacency. But many times people stay in that middle where one, where the, where the procrastination, self-doubt and complacency voice is a little bit louder than this voice over here. Am I right? It's just a little bit louder. The thing that, that we want you to take away is that you get to choose which voice you hear and act on the most. They'll always both be there. No matter where you are in life, there's always opportunity to go further. There's always opportunity to stay right where you're at. It is up to you. The difference between successful people and not so successful people, if you will, there's not another word for it. I don't wanna call them failures because that's not exactly what it is. The difference is the successful people decided to listen to the other voice. That's it. Now we can sit and talk about skill set and mindset and all that, but before all of that, they had to decide which of these two voices am I going to listen to? Which of these two paths, which lane am I going to get on? Am I going to get on clarity lane and seek all the things there? Or am I going to Am I going to, to, to lean into that, that procrastination and that complacency? It's, it's real comfortable. That's the thing, y'all. It's real comfortable. It's easier. Mm -hmm. It's easier to just to be left alone and do nothing. 
You know why it's easy? Because there's nothing you have to do, but keep doing what you're doing. But sometimes, and for some people, Linda being one of them, me being one of them, and I'm sure some of you other ladies here on this, in this, in this Wednesday, Wednesday meeting, sometimes there's some inkling in your body that says, I was made for more. And the longer you ignore it, the louder it gets. All the way until you can't even sleep good at night. Is that anybody? You can't even sleep good. The other thing I wanted to highlight before we see if, if, if Linda is doing any free discovery calls or has a program or anything like that, I'm not sure at this point. But the other thing I wanted to highlight that she said that I, that I feel stands to mention is the, pan, the pandemic changed the way a lot of people see things. You could have just been putting along just regular, but the pandemic changed the way we see things. A lot of people realize this job that I thought was just the bomb, they'll let me go in a heartbeat. Right? You thought you was all that at that job until they said we're downsizing. Okay? And all your stuff could fit in one and a half boxes. The pandemic changed a lot of people. It changed almost everyone. If the pandemic has not changed the way you see and do life, I'm not gonna be able to help you. I'm just saying. Something has to shake you up at some point to say it's time for me to get some more clarity in my life. And I, I, I admit that I need help in doing that. That's half the battle right there. Folks don't want to admit they need help. Ouch, right? Especially black women because we carry the weight of everything so we don't even want to admit we need help. Come close, sis. Everybody needs help. Did you know Oprah has a coach? Did you know Tony Robbins has a coach? Did you know Michael Jordan has a coach? All the greats have coaches. The step that Linda has taken out of her corporate career, she still had a desire in her heart to help people. So that's what she does now. She just does it for herself now. It's through her company because that's decision, the decision that she made. That's the clarity that she intentionally gained. So Linda, do you have a discovery call or a program or something to help people who are on here that are right at the brink of trying to see and understand what their next level might be? Absolutely. So yes, I do discovery calls that we can kind of get together and talk and just talk through in a comfortable setting, you know, what's going on, what's going on in your life? What is it that you're facing? What is it that you need clarity on? We can talk about that because, you know, I have been through probably what you're going through. So you can definitely reach out. We can put a, you know, have a discovery call. Right now, I have a 10-day mind, body, and soul bingo challenge that I'm taking a group of women through. And it's all about finding clarity. It's all about um, balancing and, and elevating yourself, your, your well-being, and elevating your mind, body, and soul. So that's going on right now. I will be doing another one coming up in the future. I, um, but also in the meantime, I have a boot camp that's coming up. It's called Mindset for Success. 
And that will be for a group of women who will go deeper into finding clarity and talking about, you know, your particular situation and what you're going through. So we'll cover clarity. We'll cover, we'll cover, um, um, you know, shifting your mindset, intentional goal setting. You can have goals set. You can set goals, but are you being intentional with your goals? Mm -hmm. You know, that was something I had to learn. I had to be intentional. So since I've have gone through that whole clarity experience and I know what I want to do, I have my sense of purpose. I'm being intentional and intentional in how my day starts, how my day ends. All of that is super important. So we'll go through intentional goal setting along with a number of other different things during this boot camp. So I will definitely put the um, uh, well, I'm starting, I have a wait list going on right now, but we, until we get the date set and everything, which will be towards the end of this month. So feel free to, to sign up for that, um, for the discovery call and everything. You can reach out to me on Instagram, uh, my link, I can put the name in the link in the chat and we can go from there, but I would love, love, love to work with you and um, help you through bringing clarity to your life and elevating you and helping you to live at your full potential. Awesome. Okay. So let me ask you, Linda, you, you don't know the day of the boot camp. Do you have um, the waiting list, correct? Yes. Okay. Can they set up a discovery call with you, a complimentary discovery call to see if the boot camp is a good fit for them? Absolutely. And where, can you post the link of where they would do that? Yes, ma'am. So if you're you're watching and you're wondering, I don't know if this is for me or not. I just I just have a couple of questions. Setting up a discovery call with Linda is an opportunity to see if it is or not. You have absolutely nothing to lose just by having the conversation. And she is going to post the link. And if if you know that's you, even if you're just on the fence, I want you to go ahead and grab the link and just set up the call with her. Oh, she's grabbing it. Okay, so there is her acuity scheduling link. And do you have enough appointments before the boot camp launches to have these conversations? Yes, I can definitely have. I can take any conversations that want to be signed up. I'm happy to talk with everyone. Okay, awesome. Awesome, awesome. So does anybody have any questions? We have a couple of minutes if you want to unmute your mic. If you have a question right now and you're open to asking it in front of everyone. I have a question. Yes. Linda, you talked about procrastination a little bit in your, first of all, a great story that you share with everyone. You talked about procrastination. For those who are actually in that category, what are some tips that you can provide to us that's in that status? Mm -hmm. That's a great question, Shante. Um, procrastination, there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, first is recognizing that you're procrastinating is number one. But we tend to procrastinate because of, you know, something that we don't want to do, right? Or we know it's going to be a difficult task or something that we're going to have to give a lot of thought to. So it's really all about, you know, prioritizing your day. If it's something that you're procrastinating on that you want to do, make that the first thing that you do during the day because sometimes we tend to do the easy stuff first. But when you do the, the, the more challenging task that you've been procrastinating on, when you do that first, that is something that will make the day go a little bit easier. Um, and if you put like set, set, even if you put 10 minutes into it and say, okay, I'm gonna do this for 10 minutes because I've been procrastinating on it, I'll make myself do 10 minutes. Nine times out of 10, you'll probably end up spending 30 minutes on that particular task. So that's one take. That's one idea that you could do. Awesome. Shantae, I think you should also set up a um, one of the complimentary discovery calls with Linda as well. Do we have any other questions before we go? Thanks, Linda. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Thank you so much. So we will go ahead and close out for the day. Congratulations, Linda. I loved, I love this, this, I love analogies, but I love this analogy because it, it will allow everyone to, 
to from this day forward to continue to play in their head. What lane am I walking down? Am I, lock, am I walking down clarity lane? Am I walking down procrastination lane? Am I walking down self-doubt lane? Am I walking down complacency lane? And, and when they're walking down those lanes that they shouldn't, to, to be able to recognize and say, oh, I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. Let me get off this street because it does not lead to anywhere good. And let me turn and get on another street and be intentional about the way I'm carrying out my life and my goals and my dreams. All right. All right. Thank you guys. Take care. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.